Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well and having a great Saturday so far. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about our, uh, we'll do, we're going to be doing a tropics update. And mainly on this area right here into the uh, southwestern Gulf of Mexico. And then we'll talk about this one uh, later on in the video, probably towards the end of the, uh, of the video. But uh, we won't be talking about severe weather at all today since there uh there's no there's no really risk uh for the next three days as well as uh, really any main risk for the next several days so that'll be uh, out of this video but i will include um i will make a severe weather video sometime or another probably within the next uh, couple of days hopefully but uh first we'll talk about our um two-day uh, graphical tropical weather outlook from the national hurricane center and first we'll talk about this area in the southwest gulf and then we'll talk about this one but like i said we'll talk about uh this specific area and this disturbance later in the video but we're mainly going to be focusing on this one so we have one uh, disturbance in the southwest gulf and it has a 60 percent chance of developing into a, a tropical system within the next two days and then we have one out here in the central atlantic and uh, this one has a 30% chance of developing into a tropical system within the next uh, two days. And then uh, after, uh, after this, we will look at some weather models, but uh, this area isn't, uh, this area has kind of crept up, not crept up, but it's increased in confidence that it will develop into something uh, later on. Um, but we'll move to our uh, seven day outlook now. And so, looking uh, looking back at this disturbance, sort of this Invest, it is uh, technically called Invest 91L now, but uh, Invest 91L uh, has an 80% chance of developing into a tropical cyclone within the next seven days as of the 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time update from tonight. And so, again, we'll look at this on the on our weather models, and then we'll go back to this system, not the system, this disturbance. Uh, so this one has a 50% chance of developing uh, within the next seven days. And real quick, I'm just going to look and make sure. Uh, okay, yeah, this is disturbance too. And so this one has a 50% chance of developing within the next seven days. And then we have another area out here uh, to the northeast of this system with a 40% chance of developing within the next seven days. And so again, we'll look at these areas towards the later uh, later in the video but mainly we'll be talking about this one so let's go ahead and, and look at our weather models first looking at the gfs so just looking right here into the southwest gulf um, of mexico as you can see uh, we'll start off with the 18z gfs and then going uh going through the next through the next several uh hours and then days as you can see we'll go to uh tomorrow night on sunday we have a little bit of a low pressure that starts to develop up here or down here excuse me into the southwest uh, gulf and then it kind of just dwindles out or not dwindles out but just kind of uh stays around and just wobbles um in this area in the southwest gulf and you don't have really any um development further development or intensification of this system and it just kind of stays there off of um kind of the kind of the coast of, of mexico there eastern co uh, coast of mexico there and then it slowly makes its way north and then tries to strengthen a little bit there on the 18 zgfs and slowly creeps up the eastern mexico uh coast there and then eventually kind of up into the texas coast and then it makes a turn northeast and then starts heading for uh, the basically eastern Texas, the eastern Texas uh, coast, and then eventually southwest Louisiana. And so, uh, let me just check see if the okay, yeah, this is the latest run, but it does have it hitting, kind of making landfall in uh, Louisiana there as a tropical storm, and then it goes on up, and then eventually just uh, weakens out there, but. Uh, this is this is um, kind of crept up on us. Like I said earlier, it's uh, it's been an area that's been watched, but it hasn't had high confidence until the last day or two, really. 
but we'll go to uh right right up until landfall it looks like so i did forget to mention so it would on the 18z gfs it kind of has it to making a landfall late wednesday night into early thursday it's still a little far to look at the smaller details like this but uh, we'll continue to watch it and we'll go to our previous run here so right before landfall from the 18z uh, 18z gfs and we'll go we'll go back a few runs so it's kind of just um it's been flip-flopping pretty much here kind of going back and forth between maybe a tropical storm hurricane even on this particular run um they had it they had no nothing there and then the runs before that nothing nothing and then it's crazy how uh the gfs really didn't show much and all of a sudden it's showing stronger like right here yeah stronger stronger uh solutions to this invest and so um we'll look at uh our 200 millibar shear here and this this one encounter this system won't encounter, encounter a lot of shear until it makes its way towards the uh the coastline the uh, louisiana and texas coastline and so what happens is it gets to louisiana and just kind of gets pushed up from this uh, this trough um, farther into the continental United States and then just gets picked up into the basically the jet stream and uh, gets poured off to the east there um, and then another thing we'll look at let's see we'll look at oh uh, let's see what else we'll look at our 850 millibar winds here and so um, so right here it does it does have it kind of getting into a stronger tropical storm and then a uh, decently strong tropical storm and then making landfall and then you do have that uh, wind filled with that storm you might have a little bit of a tornado or you probably will have a tornado threat with this system uh, but it's again it's pretty far out too far out for really specifics right now um, but moving back off from the uh, 850 uh, millibar winds will go to our uh, 700 to 300 millibar relative humidity um, percentages here and so one thing with this system that's kind of limiting or that would kind of uh, limit it from intensifying would be some of the dry air around it so as you can see there's quite a bit of dry air especially into um, Arkansas Oklahoma uh, Oklahoma excuse me into Texas and even northern Mississippi where that moisture has not surged in yet and so really this you can see right here this dryer gets uh, entangled in into the circulation of the low pressure so that would be something to to watch there because um, that's that's really gonna be one of them not the not the main factor but one of the factors towards this not um, strengthening any more than it's shown here and so yeah right there all that dry air gets um, into that circulation and then yeah you just have basically dry air to the south and that moisture to the uh, north of that low pressure and one thing I am kind of a little bit worried about is um, you're gonna have this mix of dry air and moisture and so that's that's not going to be too good for um, the severe weather side of this, especially with tornadoes. Because, um, I mean, when you have dry air and very, very moist air right here, and that mixes, it's not not really a good thing as far as uh, with like a tornado threat or anything, especially with that strong level jet there. A uh, tornado, tornado threat might be something to watch out for in this system. But uh, um, other than that, there's not really much else to talk about on the GFS, so we will move on to another model. Now looking at the European model, looking at the 12Z run, we'll actually uh, we'll look a little bit on the 18Z run, but we'll mainly look at the 12Z, uh, excuse me, 12Z run. And the reason I'll be looking at that is because it does go out farther. And so looking here at the uh, 12Z, it has a low way up here into the Kind of northwestern gulf of mexico and that's not the uh the same system the one we're talking about is kind of down here in the southwest 
golf and this will be on Monday and then still watching here and just ignore anything that pops up here any lows or anything but still here's our low pressure here and it, it takes I would I mean kind of the same path as the GFS up to Monday and up to this point but again it just it just wobbles around uh, really in the Gulf here and um, and that and that's another reason it does not strengthen uh, as a as quickly as just because it's interfering with land if it was out here uh, even into the Caribbean or into the central Gulf it would definitely have a much better chance of developing quicker and intens intensifying excuse me um, and then it just has it off the uh, eastern coast coast excuse me of uh, Mexico there and then into off of uh, the coast of southern Texas as a thousand uh, thousand and two millibar storm there and then again it gets into maybe like a low end tropical storm and then it strengthens a little bit kind of keeps riding up the Texas coast into Louisiana finally as a tropical storm and then has this weird thing where it strengthens a lot goes all the way from a 996 millibar storm to a 987 and just um, that would be three hours yeah from 060 to 090 on Thursday but compared to the GFS it's got a somewhat similar uh, landfall time but uh, again it's pretty far out to really look at the specifics we really won't be looking at landfall uh, landfall times until earlier or not earlier but um, later into this week but uh, one thing I did forget to look at on the GFS we'll look at it real quick then we'll go back to the European is our um, our ridging and stuff so looking at the GFS 18Z so one of the reasons why this storm doesn't keep kind of going east or it doesn't go straight up into Texas is because of this ridge really around uh, around the storm to the east or basically high pressure and uh, it just kind of pushes it up here it wants to get it wants to um, really get uh, kind of go east here and if this if this high pressure your area of higher pressure was not there it would probably get pulled a little farther east because it is uh, the troughing up here is kind of uh, dragging it up and kind of to the northeast if that makes sense and so that's one of the reasons why it moves that way and then besides that higher pressure uh, you've got that low pressure or not excuse me that uh, troughing pulling it up to the north and so as you can see there there's that uh, there's the low pressure hitting into the land and so behind that that ridge builds even more so um, that kind of makes it move to the northeast and north with that but then uh, going back to the European now and we'll look at the same thing still has that ridge of uh, high pressure and it just kind of keeps it going like this and keeps it from moving east or any farther uh, east than it uh, is kind of forecast to go but again there it is and then there it goes up into Louisiana and Arkansas and eventually just uh, gets caught up into the jet stream there and so we'll again again we'll look at the 800 excuse me 850 millibar wind soon it does have a um pretty strong wind field going into louisiana or texas and and then that that wind field is still pretty strong for the most part but it is um it's a little bit weaker than the gfs and then i don't know what it tries to do here hit like uh, strength the wind the wind field intensifies there and you get a stronger low level jet I'm not sure if it's interacting with that um, with with the troughing and this gets caught up in the trough so uh, we'll look at our 200 and 200 uh, millibar winds here and so um, really you don't you don't have a uh, much shear affecting it as it's in the gulf but then once it gets closer to the coastline you do you do have it kind of interacting with uh, some troughing there and then that shear just 
really eats at it and does not let it get uh, get any stronger from that period on. And then now looking at our relative humidity values on the European, and you have it here and then have all that drier into Texas and Oklahoma, as well as Arkansas, mainly just uh, most of the United States, or most of the uh, eastern and um, central United States. And then that dryer just gets entangled into the uh, circulation there and limits it from really intensifying anymore. But again, I do think this will be at the tornado tornado side of this will be something we'll have to watch if you get that dry air um, into that circulation with moist air uh, to the north of that as well as that low level jet with that um, that might be a problem later on but again it's too too far to really look at that now but uh, that'll be it for the European now looking at the icon uh, model real quick um, we'll go to Let's see here if we have our latest drone. So that'll be the 18Z icon model here. And so uh, generally the same thing as the GFS in European stays off of the eastern uh, Me uh, Mexico coast there into um, the north northwest Gulf of Mexico, kind of into Tuesday and eventually Wednesday. And it does have it strengthening into uh, maybe a tropical storm there before it hits uh hits land and then it keeps going and maintains it at a 996 or 995 low pressure there and then strengthens just a little bit more and then makes landfall maybe into louisiana again not again but into louisiana as a 995 low pressure and uh then it gets lifted and carried off to the north into uh Mississippi and Arkansas there so pretty similar um, on on the icon and uh, real quick we'll look at our uh, ridging with this too and I think really most most uh, models are in agreement with with this uh, area of higher pressure to the east of it and it just gets pushed um, north there and then eventually northeast into Louisiana so uh, I would definitely keep watching this system if you live in uh, if you do live in Texas I would watch it and then I would still really the main state if you uh, if you live in Louisiana I would definitely watch this system even into Mississi uh, Mississippi uh, I would watch this system too and even Arkansas um, but again we'll just have to see how this plays out over the next few days and um, as uh, like as it gets further into the Gulf to the north, that'll be the uh, determining factor if it intensifies or not. Um, so if it does un intensify a little quicker, it probably will have a landfall a little bit further west. But uh, um, if it stays kind of a in the 990 to 1000 millibar range, it'll probably get carried a little bit farther east into Louisiana as a... Uh, Nine, uh, 994, 993 low pressure uh, there. Now, uh, switching to the hurricane models, uh, and then after this, we will, uh, that'll be it for this video. But uh, looking at the hurricane models and looking at our, our Invest 91L, um, starting off with the HWRF model, model, excuse me, <laughs> uh, we'll look at our uh, low pressure here. So, it eventually gets out uh, out into the southwest Gulf, uh, kind of on uh, maybe Monday, and again just wobbles around off the coast of uh, eastern off the eastern coast of Mexico, and just continues to wobble around, and then gets pretty close to um, basically the northeast coast of Mexico and the southeast coast of texas and then it has it getting into the 997 millibar range maybe a tropical storm there showing up on the hwrf and then really it starts affecting quite a bit of the texas coast and then gets it to a 992 still going and then gets it to a 999 997 and keeps going keeps going and then eventually makes a landfall 
officially makes a landfall um, as a thousand millibar storm. Maybe like a low end tropical storm, but maybe like a, a tropical depression, um, possibly. But for um, as far as the as far as the rain, the rain goes, I would definitely watch out if you live on the uh, Texas coastline. Pretty much the entire Texas coastline, I would keep a watch out for um, for this system, especially into. Um, Pretty much southeast Texas and then eventually into northeast Texas and then definitely into Louisiana as well but um, we'll switch to the uh, HMON model and then we'll go to the HAFSA model or HFSA model however you want to say it but first I can have the HMON model so eventually gets it into the Gulf um, again sometime on Monday and then while was around strengthened to a 997 millibar storm on early on Tuesday keeps going kind of makes a land maybe a landfall into uh, northeast Mexico there then wobbles off again then just kind of stays and lingers around into northeast Mexico and southeast or basically southern Texas and then uh, gets it going and going and then eventually just moves out into the Gulf again maybe and just dumps a lot of rain into the Texas uh, coast as well as maybe uh, the Louisiana coast but it does not have it strengthening into really a tropical storm there but um, still we'll have to keep watching on all these models and then the HAF uh, SA model same thing wobbles around has it strengthening a lot quicker into a tropical storm than maybe uh, almost a hurricane into a tropical storm gets it lingering off the the uh, Mexico coast eastern Mexico coast and um, um, then just kind of creeps up the coast and then off again off the texas coast strengthens again into maybe a tropical storm and then this wall was around here tropical storm maybe maybe makes the landfall near the texas louisiana line um as a kind of a 990 992 storm maybe and then this um kind of lingers around here but this is again this is pretty far out for the hurricane model so they won't be as um as accurate in the longer range as as the uh, global models will be but uh again it does have that making a landfall maybe maybe around the texas louisiana border but uh definitely will be something to continue to watch over the next few days now quickly looking back at our two systems down towards the central atlantic uh right here so first we'll look at our uh, disturbance to farther to the uh, west of that other system and so uh, again looking at the 18z gfs here it does eventually develop and then kind of gets going and um, it, uh, develops into maybe a tropical uh, storm eventually and then that'd be uh, kind of in the middle of this week maybe thursday or Wednesday or Thursday and then uh, not looking at this system but just focusing on this one for right now we will talk about that one in just a second but just looking on this one it gets it going and then continues to go west and then eventually continues to strengthen pretty rapidly actually and gets it to a uh, to maybe a category 2 hurricane uh, and then pretty much a hurricane and then gets it further down uh, and this basically rapidly intensifies and then keeps going into the uh, lesser Antilles and then eventually kind of get into the uh, lesser and greater Antilles and then eventually moving north um, later or excuse me earlier next week but again it's it's very far out to look at this system this system is very far out because even even maybe a suggested 
landfall would be uh, next coming weekend so a week out so it's definitely too far to look at the specifics and we'll go to we'll go to midday Saturday next Saturday and then just to go back a run it's not even there that system but uh, it's just something to to keep a watch on um, with this system in particular so definitely keep a watch out if you live in the uh, lesser or greater Antilles and uh, um, we'll go back to our other system right here and this one has a 40% uh, chance of developing into a uh, system within the next seven days and so keeps going keep it going uh, keeps going kind of heads north there and this would be again this is far out as well uh, next weekend and then it eventually just goes out into the central Atlantic and moves out out to sea but uh, I don't think we really have much to worry about with this system or anybody else really uh, for that matter but going all the way to the end of the run this has it going out to see if it does develop into anything but I think this system may be another another one we may have to watch um, kind of into late this week into uh, this coming weekend and then we'll look at the 12z European real quick has this has this system really just dwindling out and then it has our other system on the GFS that was showing up was way out here but it does have this one uh, kind of heading west too but again I don't think we'll have much to worry about with the the uh, this system but the first one we may have have to uh, watch out for if the GFS were to uh, come true but that those two systems are, will uh, definitely need to be watched throughout this this coming week but uh, other than that uh, that'll be about it for uh, this update so that's going to be it for tonight's video um, I do appreciate all of y'all watching and all of y'all who uh, watched the end um, I may have a video up again maybe early this coming week uh, this work week but um, it probably I'll likely have one out at least by Wednesday hopefully but uh, again I'm going to try my best to keep doing more fre uh, frequent uploads uh, so I can kind of keep a schedule going so I'm not so sporadic with my uploads um, but again I do appreciate all y'all watching and as I uh, always say I, I'm trying to improve with each video I do um, so I, uh, I, yeah, I do hope to improve as much as I can each video and especially with this uh, this tropical uh, the hur this hurricane season will be kind of my first uh, season doing hurricane season doing uh, tropical weather updates so that's pretty new to me the only thing only two things I am used to doing is severe weather updates and some winter weather updates so this is something that I'm I would say the least least familiar not least familiar but least uh familiar with as far as forecasting goes but uh like i said i do appreciate all y'all watching and i do hope to have another video out in the coming days but uh, that'll be it for this up uh it, this update and i hope y'all have a great rest of y'all's uh night or day